good morning, Sheffield. Come on and stand to your feet. Those that are watching online from home, come on and join us. This morning there is power in the blood. Hallelujah. Whatever you're facing, there's power in the blood. Whatever you need God to do, we want you to draw from the power that's in the blood of the Lamb. Come on, put your hands.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that your, your goodness is at the highest mountain. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. And even his goodness reaches down to the lowest valley. So even in your deepest and darkest hours, guess what? Hallelujah. There's goodness there. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your goodness, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Dan, Lord, for reaching way down thank and you. picking me up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see of the goodness Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God your voice, I love your voice. You have led me through. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a father. And I've known you as, known you as a friend. I have lived. In the goodness of God. Cause all, all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath, every breath that I am able. Oh, I Oh, 
Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. I will oh, see. Oh, I will see. Of the goodness of God, I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you're just overwhelmed at the goodness of God. He's so good. That's why we want to bless him today. He's our redeemer. He's our healer. He sticks closer than a brother. He is our everything. So just bless him today for his goodness that is running after you. Bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Your praise will always be forever in my mouth, forever on my lips. I will bless the Lord. Your praise. Oh 
bless you, Lord. We will bless you, Lord. We will bless your holy name, Jesus. We will bless your holy name, Father. Your praise will always be. Your praise will always be. Yes, your praise will always be. Your praise will always be. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, church, the psalmist knew that as he started riding down, the very words to this song, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. For him to write the lyrics down in scripture lets me know that he had went through difficult times yes. in his life. Yes. If you think about where we are in this life, we've all been through difficult times. Coming out of, it's been already mentioned, three years of what a pandemic has happened. On top of all of life's troubles, on top of difficulties, pains, disappointments, frustrations, setbacks. And then we come into 2023 and we say, God, what do you have for us? And all we hear on the news is inflation and increase and decrease. And then you try to tap into the presence of the Lord and you feel depleted. You feel like you don't have any more strength. But the scripture tells us in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they will mount up on wings as eagles. But the problem is we don't want to wait. But I believe this is the year, church, that we're going to see a rising in the spirit. We're going to see a rising in the spirit. Your setback, God's going to move you forward. Your discouragement, your lack of strength, God's going to renew your strength today. You're thinking, Pastor, I can't do one more day of pain in my body. I can't do one more day of financial setback. The song said, he's the mender of the broken heart. Let's me know that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will supply for my need. He will take care of my, my broken heart today. He will take me through because we said it with our own lips this morning. There is power in the blood. Wonder working power in the blood. This morning there's still power in the blood. If we're willing to still believe that God is able this morning. Yeah. I just want to encourage you. 22 days in to a new year. Don't allow last year's stuff to travel with you. There's still power in the blood. There's still power in the blood. Don't allow it to travel with you. Just remind the Lord, this is yours, it's not mine. You're fighting for me. You're fighting with me. You are my strength. You are my help. You're all that I need today, Jesus. You're all that I need today. This morning, you've got a need. You're watching my stream, you, you've got a need. There's family members in our church, lost loved ones. We need to pray for them this morning. We've lost a very precious saint in the church. She was one of our greeters, her and her husband. She's gone home to be with the Lord. 
Just pray that God just continue to cover her family today. They need encouragement. But you've got a need, and it's important to God. It's important to us. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Church, what's going to take us through 2023 is our faith in God. And make sure that we have the essentials. Make sure that your lamp doesn't go out this year. Make sure you've got oil in your lamp. That you're not caught without any oil in your lamp this year. God's going to do a new thing. I believe. God's going to do a new thing. For us. As we stay before him and wait on him. Can we go before the Lord this morning in prayer? And believe God. Because you know what? 22 days in. Some of you have come off a fast, and I'm, a believe, I'm believing this morning. What you've petitioned the Lord for, you're going to see victory. You're going to see victory. You'll see victory this year. You've laid it before him. You've turned your plate over. You've shut off the TV. You've put down your cell phone. You said, God, I'm giving it all to you. This is the year I'm going to see increase. This is the year that I'm going to see a change. This is the year... I'm believing for breakthrough. Yes. Let's go before the Lord in prayer and believe God. Corporately, this is the year. Make us who you want us to be, God. Let us see more of you in our lives, God. So, Father, we come before you today. We ask today in Jesus' name that you see the hearts of your sons and daughters, even those who are watching by stream today. God, they're believing for a change. They're believing for a breakthrough today, God. Father, they've already petitioned you from the beginning of this year. Father, for a greater work to be done in their lives, God. Father, we believe that there's still power in the blood today. It will never lose its power today. Father, we pray today in Jesus' name that you would bind up the brokenhearted today. Father, comfort those who have lost loved ones today. Father, some have lost jobs already. Father, some need to see Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides today. Father, we know that some have gone up to the mountain today. Believe in, Father, to see Jehovah Jireh. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name that you release a new hope. Allow a rising in the spirit today. Father, for all your people, that they will see you, Father, in a new way today. Father, take them to newer heights and deeper depths today, God. Allow their hearts to be renewed today in this faith walk today. We're not going to take last year's stuff into this new year. 22 days in, God. We're believing for a change, God. We're believing for a breakthrough today, God. We're believing for a turnaround today. Father, we're believing for healing and restoration today. Father, I pray that you would allow us to allow the praise to continue to be upon our lips today, God. We thank you for who you are, and we bless you today in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church shut amen today. Come on and give him praise today. Hallelujah. Bless him this morning. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Believe him for the victory this morning. Yes, God. We believe you for victory today. We believe you for victory today.
God, we thank you for who you are. We honor you this day. We believe you, God. We stand on your word today. And we give you praise this morning. Can we give the Lord another shout of praise this morning? Not with your hands, but with your lips this morning. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you this morning, church, but I believe God. And I'm going to stand on his word that he's with us. He's going to take us through. Amen? Amen. Amen. Maybe it's your first time ever attending Sheffield Family Life Center. We pray that if it is, after the service, you'll be so kind as to make your way into our Connection Center. We'd like to greet you in the name of the Lord. Please come there after the service. For those of you in the sanctuary, those who are watching by stream, we're so grateful that you've chosen to come and worship with us today. Turn around, greet someone in the name of the Lord. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of God. Continue to wait in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 God is so good. So good. I don't know about you, but even in the midst of difficult times, we can still praise God. Amen? He's our only hope, and he's the one that will bring us through this morning. We're so glad that you've chosen to come and worship with us today, and maybe you'd like to continue in your time of worship and giving. You can go to 816-266-4848, or you can go to sflc.net. Hit on the giving prompt this morning, or hopefully you've picked up an envelope as you made your way into the sanctuary, and after the service, if you'll be so kind as to drop those envelopes off in the receptacles in the middle of the sanctuary, back by the sound booth. Amen. Turn your attention to our screens. We've got some announcements for you today. Good morning, Sheffield family. It's another beautiful Sunday, and we're so excited that you chose to join us in person and online. As always, there's a lot going on that I want to let you know about, so here's your announcements. The Let's Go Sunday School class meets every Sunday at 9 a.m. in Doc Hall B. It's led by Anthony and Sandra Butler. This class is for anyone 18 and over. To kick off the year, we will be focusing on healing and deliverance. This impacts every single relationship we're in, including our relationship with ourselves and our relationship with the Lord. Come with expectation as we see what the Lord has in store for us. This is gonna be an awesome class and you don't wanna miss it. We'll see you there. Your 2022 giving statements will be available in the West Lobby on Sunday, January 29th, following the 9 and 11 a.m. services. If you are unable to pick up your contribution statements in person, you can call the church office for more information. The women's prayer group is kicking off soon. It will start Tuesday, January 31st at 7 p.m. via Zoom, and they have a new study to go over, Amos. Amos is often called a prophet of doom, and when you begin to read his prophecy, it doesn't take long to realize that nickname fits. On the surface, his prophecy doesn't sound like a happy formula for the good life. However, every condemnation he gives serves as an invitation, a cry for us to seek God and live. You will be invited to live assured, faithful, chosen, humble, justly, prayerful, and hopeful. This kind of living will bring us and others around us peace and true prosperity. Amos is promoting the God life, and the God life is the good life. If you would like to get involved in this study, or for more information, you can contact me, Lauren Hill, at our church office. The Connect Young Adults, which is for anyone between the ages of 18 to 35, meets every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in our East Balcony. It's led by Ray and Christina Clay. They would like to invite you to their next class. The topic of discussion will be Hope for Young Adults. If you have any questions or would like to get involved in this amazing ministry, please feel free to reach out to Christina Clay at our church office.
The next installment of our Get Connected membership class will be February 1st at 7 p.m. in room 1134. If you would like to register for this class, please contact Pat Washington at our church office. Our next Operation Loves Outreach will be February 4th at 8.45 a.m. in our gym across the street. Volunteers are asked to arrive at 7 a.m. We offer a wide variety of positions as well as flexibility with your calendar. You might think you might not have time to volunteer in such a big ministry, but we actually have a place just for you. If you have questions about how you can get involved or how you can receive food, please feel free to contact me, Lauren Hill, at our church office. That's all the announcements I have for you today. Now it's time for giving. We have a couple different options on how you can give. You can text 816-266-4848, enter that exact giving amount, and then follow the prompts. You can visit us online at sflc.net. Go ahead and click on that giving tab and then fill out your information there. If you'd like to mail or walk in your tithe, it'd be here to the main campus at 5700 Winter Road, Kansas City, Missouri, 64127. And if you're in the house today, thank you so much for being here. We truly appreciate you. I hope you got a chance to grab a tithe envelope. If you fill out your information and seal it up, you can drop in the receptacles after service. Have an awesome day, Sheffield. Amen. Come on, you can give the Lord a better praise offering than that for everything that's happening here at Sheffield Family Life Center. Amen. I'm telling you what, God's doing some great things, and we believe that 2023 is going to be the year of great victory for us. Amen. Amen. Reaching people, connecting people to the real God in a real way. Amen. We want to connect people to the real Jesus in a real way. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about this year. We want to do our part, making ministry available for you and your entire family right here at Sheffield Family Life Center because we believe God's doing an incredible work right here. You know, as you look over the course of years to see where God has brought us from, sometimes our mind wants to get stuck of where we used to be. But I don't want to get stuck where we used to be I want to know what God wants us to do today and where he's taking us, amen? How many of you want to believe God for greater days ahead, amen? It takes faithfulness of God's people as we give to the work of the ministry and give to the, the work of the Lord. We're so grateful for your partnership. We know that as you've been able to bring your tithe, your first fruits, your love offerings into the house of the Lord, that you've given with a grateful heart. And so this morning, we want to encourage you today. You're watching by stream. This is the start of a new year. Let's be faithful and giving to God from the beginning. Amen. Just like he asked us to give a tenth, that's right off the top. The first, the first of, of, of our increase, right? That's a tenth. Some of you choose to give first fruits, which is something that maybe you didn't expect, or some first of the month or whatever. It's first. You choose to give that. You choose to give offerings because your heart towards God, you love the Lord. You want to give him more than what you're required to give him. I just want to encourage you, as you steward what God has given you, just be mindful that you're stewarding over 90% of your income. You still have to steward that, amen? God gives us the responsibility to give him his first, the tenth. Then we steward the 90%. That's a big job for all of us. Let's be faithful in giving our first fruits, our tithes, our offerings, and be faithful in stewarding the rest of what God gives us. See what he won't do on our behalf. Amen? I believe God has a blessing for us in store. Amen? Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for who you are. We pray your blessing over this tithe, offerings, our first fruits today, God. We pray that you will bless it. Both gift and giver, may it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, we pray, and return back to your people. Father, overflow, I pray, in Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen this morning. May the Lord bless you as you give to him. Let's welcome our pastor today. I, I think he's loaded this morning, amen? He's got a little victory chain on him. 
I have to, it's on, it's on here, it may not be on out there. I can't preach in this, so I'm going to put it on you, because you just, you just scored, so. I did what? All right, so you can wear that the rest of the service. Oh, uh, thanks. I don't need to say anything more about that. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Great to, uh, great to be with you. Great, be, great to be in the house. Thank you for being with us online. If you're sharing a few moments with us online, we are honored to have you share this with us. Our theme for the year has been Potential. And uh, I'm going to continue that today. Pastor Willie threw threw a vision statement out, and this is going to be it's, it's a little ten word it's a little ten word vision mission focus statement that, uh, that you're going to be hearing a lot. And um, we landed on this and said, yes, this is this is what we're doing. This is what we're about, and it's this connecting people to the real Jesus in a real way. I want us to get so used to saying that and hearing that, anytime somebody says, well, what, is, what do you do at Sheffield? Well, we're about connecting people to the real Jesus in a real way. What's your purpose? I mean, you know, what's your vision? Connecting people to a real Jesus in a real way. That's what we do. Everything we do is about that, every single thing, and I, you know, I feel like that's the purpose of my life, my calling at this point, and that's the heart of this house, and that's what this community is about, and that's what Sheffield has always done, and we're going to delineate it, so I want, I want us to get so used to hearing it that we know it, that we know it, we know it, so you never have to wonder What is our church about? What do we do? What's our goal? Our goals are this, connecting people to the real Jesus in the real way. That's what we're about. I'm not going to make you say it with me. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but you're going to hear it a lot, and I I would like you to, to work on letting that sink in and remembering that, connecting people to the real Jesus in a real way. I'm excited about it. I may be the only one, but I'm excited about it. There are two of us. (laughs) See, I like I like I like things that are simple that you can package. I like that. I like when you say, okay, well this is this. And so I wanted in mentally, I wanted to get who we are down to ten words. As you know, you, you go through all of it. What do you value? Well, we've got our 10 values. We've got our vision statement. We've got a mission statement. We've got our values. We've got our purpose. We've got this. We've got that. All of that is, is great. If you uh, lead a business or are part of managing or, or working in a business, you've probably seen a, a mission statement, a vision statement, a purpose. This is what we do. This is how we do it. This is why we do it. That's what this is in 10 words. It's all of that in 10 words. And so... Uh, I'm excited that, that we can simplify that, make it plain, and this is who we are. This is who Sheffield Family Life Center is. Everything we do is about that. I will go to Ephesians, because I feel like you'll be much more excited about this. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 20. This is our our. our passage that, that is going to, going to be tied into our theme of potential. All year long. Is this this word potential? The theme potential is our word for the year. It's our theme for the year. Not everything is going to fit into that, but kind of conceptually, everything does fit into that. So that's that's where we are this year. Verse 16 says this. Paul is saying he prays for them. I pray, and he prays, you know, we can translate this to to, uh, leaders and people interceding for us. Pray this glory from his glorious unlimited resources that God will empower, 
with inner strength through his spirit. I just want to focus on 16 today. That he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. This, this is where the potential comes from. Being empowered by God with inner strength, and that empowerment is through the Spirit. We can't, we can't do much of anything on our own. We've all tried. We can mess things up. We can end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Without the leading of the Spirit, without the empowering of the Spirit, it's very difficult. And this, this inner strength seems to be provided to us, as, as I explore this and have for, for years and decades now, the, this inner strength seems to be provided to us in structural formats. There are things we can point to and say, yes, this, this, this. There's a structural format to gaining and walking in that inner strength. And because I, I remember, you know, growing up in church, oftentimes you felt like the whole, the whole picture of church and the whole voice of all churches was just saying, okay, you need to do this, and there was no how to, how do we do that? It's just like, you just do this. You do this. You make the right decisions. You do the right things. Uh, you make heaven your home. Uh, you, you accept Jesus into your heart, and then you just live the Christian life. Go out and live the Christian life. And it's like, we don't know how to do that. There wasn't a lot of how-tos. And I think, I think now we have finally, as, as a church and as, as a community that is following Christ, realized, okay, we need to, we need to figure out how to do this. Because it, it doesn't just automatically happen. People accept Jesus Christ, they choose to be followers of Christ, and then we're kind of lost. And it's like, where do I go? What do I do? And that's, that's why we need to be in church. That's why we need to be in the presence of God. That's why we need to begin to, uh, to look into the Bible or listen to the Word of God. We need to change our spiritual diet so we can begin to grow a little bit in Christ. I want to give you three rudiments, three rudiments that, that I feel are part of that structure and I see as part of that structure today. And again, it's he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. And just, you don't have to say that with me, but think that to yourself. He will empower me. Make it personal. He will empower me. Just think this. He will empower me with inner strength through the Spirit. That's how it happens. First of all, there's, there's a plan. There's always a plan. There's a blueprint, and there's wisdom that goes with it. Uh, we have to adhere. We have to adhere to the plan. We have to adhere to God's blueprint and his wisdom. Last week in the 11 o'clock service, I talked for just a few minutes about Jesus being the only way. You know, and, and we try to change a blueprint some things in a blueprint you can change. Some things you absolutely cannot change. And there are certain things about following Christ that you cannot change. Following Christ, having relationship with God, means you have an established relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. See, that's the blueprint. The Spirit speaks to us. The Spirit advocates for us. The Holy Spirit gives us power. But Jesus is the avenue to God. And we can say, well, we've changed the plan. It doesn't work. Well, we've, put, we've added on a couple rooms. You can't. Well, we've changed the, the structure, uh, the, the retaining walls and the weight-bearing walls. We've kind of changed that around. You can't. You can't. The plan is what it is. And God has a plan, a master plan, and he also has a plan for you. There's blueprint. Then there's wisdom, and we need help with it. We need help with it. We need structure. That's another reason that the house of God is good for us, because we need structure. Imagine if there was no structure you getting on, for you getting to church, the building, today. Okay, there, were, there are no speed limits. There are no stop signs or stoplights. 
There's no structure. I've been in countries that there, there is no structure. And I've seen cars and trucks and vans full of people collide at high rates of speed because there was no structure. You know, and we, and we lose some of that. I, I still go back to the rules of the road book oftentimes when I'm driving. And you get to a corner and you say, okay, you stop. Everybody gets there at the same time. Well, the person on my right has the right of way. And people don't want, well, that doesn't mean anything. It actually does. And so there, there are rules to drive. There's structure to driving. You get to a four-way stop, who has the right of way? If the lights are all blinking, who has the right of way? And it upsets us when we get there first and somebody else goes ahead of us. Because that's not the right structure. They didn't follow the structure. There is structure to our spirituality. There has to be. We would be lost without structure. I don't care how good-hearted you are, without structure, you would be lost. Without structure, we would stumble around, and we would probably not have a great relationship with God. So we need structure. That's a blueprint. There's a plan. We need structure, and we need boundaries. We need specs. We need specifications. That's why oftentimes God says, do this, don't do this. In his word, it says, well, you can do this, but you can't do this. You know, and we live in a, we live in a culture now that wants to do away with all absolutes. There are no absolutes on any level. And what we're getting to, and you can see it happening, we are rapidly becoming a society that has no boundaries and no structure. And so what, what does that produce? That produces infighting between everybody. Because there's no right. You can't say something's right anymore because it's not. There's no right. There's no wrong. If you think this carpet is blue, I can't tell you it's green. And it's not. The carpet is some kind of beige color. It used to be green. The seats are green. So I probably wouldn't tell you it's green. But there's, we're, we're and, and I've been telling you this for years, we are one by one doing away in our society with absolutes. And you say, well, yeah, those, those stinking Republicans, those stinking Democrats. And no, no, it's, it's our society. It's what everybody's doing. Everybody's sitting around the same table. They might have different color cards in their hand, but they're all sitting around the same table. Trust me on this one, even if you don't want to believe it. And so what's happening is, globally, all structure, all absolutes are being erased. They are. And we're going to end up with a society that has nothing but fighting and hate and frustra frustration and, and chaos and the man of perdition, the Antichrist, is going to be someone who brings order out of chaos. And you can see the global picture being set up for all of us needing somebody who can give us some instruction. And, and we don't want to think about that because we want to live our life and we don't want to be scared and we don't want to look at that. But the Bible is playing out. Prophecy is playing out so vividly in front of us. If we choose to ignore it, we are going to at some point discover that we are in a place we don't want to be in. It's all there. And we're watching it happen. We have to have structure. We have to have boundaries as much as we don't like it. There's a plan. A number of years ago, probably seven or eight years ago now, uh, we, uh, we took a, a trip to uh, California, Southern California, Los Angeles area, that whole, that whole area. And uh, just as a, as a vacation, uh, you know, like to go there sometimes and just see, see, you know, see a different world, see different things and be a part of that and the whole, the whole thing, you know, you do when you're on vacation in a different place. And so it was, it was uh, myself, Annette, uh, my oldest, our oldest son, Gio, who was not married at that point, and our daughter, Lexi. And we were all there. And if you've ever been to the L.A. area, uh, they don't drive like we drive. So if you're in L.A. or New York City, I've driven quite a bit in both places. If you're in L.A. or New York City... 
once you, once you change your mindset, it's wonderful because you just go. You don't worry about how this person feels or if there's enough room. If you need to get over, you get over. If you need to change three lanes, you do. You drive aggressively and you don't worry. You, you, know, you try to obey the rules of the road, but you drive aggressively. It's a different world. And there's traffic everywhere. In the middle of the night, there's, it's like 5 o'clock traffic in Kansas City. And so you are in gridlock everywhere you go most of the time. And if not, you know, the, the, you've got a car length ahead of you. And so um, the way we did it was I was driving. Gio, my old, our old son, was our navigator because he had everything planned out. We're going here. We're going here. We're going here. We're going to see this. We're going to see that. We're doing this. We're doing this. This is where we're going every day. They had, he and Lexi had every day planned out. So this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. They planned it out, and I paid for it. How does that work? <laughs> this is what we're doing. And by the way, you're paying for it all. So that's what we did. And so we went everywhere, and what would happen is, you know, you'd have all this stuff going on around us, talking in the, in the vehicle, music in the background, all this stuff going on, and, and Gio would be calling out, okay, we're our next, you know, a mile, and a mile ahead of us, we're going to be going right, because, you know, in Kansas City, you can kind of pay attention to your navigation, watch the road at the same time, listen, you've got a couple seconds. In L.A., I, no, you have no time, you can't go, okay, you know, it's just, you can't do that. So we needed a navigator. And so he would say, okay, a mile ahead, you're going to be going off to the right. You're getting on the 405 here, up here. We're going, we're going west. You get on, here's where we go. Go here, get off of this street. This is the two miles ahead. You're going to need to get in the right lane. So he's, he's navigating. He did that every day, every way we went. And it got to a point that no matter what else was going on, I could hear his voice telling me that. And I could kind of tune everything else out and hear him saying, okay, a mile and a half, we're going to be getting off this freeway to the left, we're going to another freeway, we're getting off on this street, then we'll go two blocks. and we're taking... So all this was happening, but I could, I could tune in to the voice of the navigator and end up going the right direction. In our plan, we have to get to a point that we can tune into the voice of the Spirit, the voice of the navigator in our life. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what the chaos is, no matter what the noise is, we can still hear the voice of the navigation system. We have to get to that point. There's greater potential for us if we're following God and His navigation for us. We have to follow the plan. There's a plan. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but there is. Number two, the second rudiment I want to give you is the pace. There's a pace. P-A-C-E. I had this happen this week in the last five days. And it's happened to me many times. Uh, I have, I have the, the gift of, of choosing the lane on the freeway or a two-lane highway that has the slowest vehicle in it. I have that gift. And if I switch lanes, somehow this car decides to go slower than that one was going. So I'm on a road and the speed limit is 55 or 65 and someone is going 37. That is not of God. And so you're going... And so, you know, I, and it happened this week. I got behind a truck and a car, and they're going 25 miles under the speed limit. And I'm just going, oh, come on. You absolutely, obviously, you have nowhere you have to be. You've got nothing else going on in life. You don't want to get anywhere. You just want to drive. So I'm saying all this stuff to my windshield. And I'm in my car. I'm frustrated. And, of course, I'm thinking, I'm breaking out of this. I'm breaking out of this. But, but the problem is when you're close to slow vehicles, people come up on you and they get a jump on you into the other lane. So it's constantly, you're looking in your, your rear view mirror and there's always a vehicle coming up on you going, okay, I'm getting over now. I can't, that guy's over. And that one's coming over. Then the person right behind you goes over and you're just like, somebody let me in. 
And I was so I was I was getting ready to pull out and go around these two vehicles. And at that point, you're just going, we're gonna see how fast this thing can go. And I and I started to pull out, and I was gonna punch it. And I didn't. And I realized there's a cop radaring. There's a speed trap. That's not why these people were going slow. Don't give them any credit. But this happens to me quite often. When I'm getting ready to just blow by somebody and go from 30 to 75 in 2.3 seconds, and I don't, or I can't get around them, and there's, there's a, a highway patrolman, or there's a cop radaring, and I'm just like, at that point, every single time I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Forgive me for complaining so much. Thank you. You probably just saved me about $130 and a couple of points. Thank you so much. But we get so frustrated when the pace is not what we want it to be. The speed limit is 65. Why would you go 63? I go, I have a habit. I go, I go four miles, three, four, three to five miles over the speed limit. I don't want tickets. I don't want any of that. I am a pretty average driver as far as speed. Now, I'm related to somebody. I'm related to somebody that does not believe like I believe. <laughs> he goes at a different pace. And he's pretty quick to point out how slow I drive when he blows by me on the road. But of course, you know, somebody stops Dr. Westlake, they're just going, I used to watch you on TV, you're free to go. I grew up watching you, we watched you every Sunday night. By the way, let me, let me run, let me run, let me run, run front, let me run block for you. I'll put the lights on, we'll get you where you want to go. Well, they're not going to do that for me. They're going to go, you want to step out of the car, sir? And that's on a good day. So, the, the fact that my pace is not what I want it to be can be extremely frustrating. I want to get somewhere, I time it out. Okay, I've got 20 minutes. It takes me 18 minutes to get there. I'll be there. And then you see traffic. There are speed traps. There are speed limits. There are pit stops. There are school zones. God uses that pace to actually teach us a lot. So he teaches us a lot through pace. Because we would just do everything very quickly. Well, you put this on my heart, God, so I'm going to do it. You told me to do this. I feel like this is you, so I'm going to do it. I feel like you want me to take this job, so I'm going to take it. I feel like you want me to be here, there, with this person, doing that, doing this, whatever, going here, taking this. I, I, you, I feel like you want me to do that, so I'm doing it right now. But in actuality, God had that for you down the road. He might have, had it, he might have it for you. But it's at a different pace. That's why we have to pay attention to that GPS. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the GPS, which GPS, um, some of you may know, stands for Global Positioning System. Well, God has a positioning system for us. It's still GPS, but it's a little different. And we get frustrated because on our global positioning system, it will show us red lines. It will show us how long it's going to take to get there. It will show us if there's an accident. It will show, if there's, show us if there's a speed trap up ahead. It will show us all kinds of things. How long it's going to take. The shortest route. The best route. Blah, blah. It will show us all that. And we, can, we want that spiritually. God, show me. Show me something. Show me how I'm going to get there. Show me how long it will take. Show me why this pace is going so slow and I'm not getting anywhere and God doesn't show us. We might, you might be in a school zone. 
School zone is where you're driving 35 and you realize it just dropped to 25. And after going 35, 40, 60, going 25 feels like you're not even moving. It's like I, I'm struggling to go 25. I've got my foot on the brake going uphill and I still can't go 25. And we say that to God. God, I, I can't do this. I can't, I can't go this speed. I can't deal with this. You can. You can. It's a learning period. It's a learning period. We learn. We learn from those things. We learn from the school zones. We learn from, tra- from being in traffic. We learn from accidents. We were sitting at a stoplight one time. It was probably 1991 or two. We were sitting at a stoplight in the Chicago area, and I looked in the rearview mirror, and I saw this car coming fast, and I just, I think I I said, we're going to get hit. There was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to, to move. Boom, this guy ran into us, ran into us, and then somebody ran into him. So it was like, boom, you hit, then you hit again. Is two cars hit us. And when you're in that kind of a situation, you don't know what to do. It's like, what do I do? There, 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 there was a, a collision that I didn't see coming. Everybody in the room has had collisions that you didn't see coming. On your spiritual GPS. I didn't see this coming. And you end up standing on the side of the road kind of looking at the carnage and come to find out one of the guys in the accident was so, was so jacked up on steroids, he literally was jumping around and screaming and looking for somebody to lash out at, and he's the one that did it. And so we're standing there, and you don't, you don't really know what to what to do, and didn't expect this, and our car's messed up, and we don't have the money to fix that, and what about insurance and the deductible, and so you're just going all through all this stuff, what are we going to do, like this car, now it's a mess, that's kind of how it goes for us sometimes spiritually, I didn't see this coming, I don't know what, to, I, can't, I can't afford this right now, I can't, I can't do this. My life can't take this. Some of you are going through things right now. And and you feel that way. My my life, my existence can't take this. Uh, I'm not equipped for this right now. I'm not not capable of handling this right now. I don't have the, the means for it. Whatever that means is. I don't have the means for it. I don't have a solution. I don't have anybody to help I'm just in this mess. There was this collision I didn't see coming. And here it is, and I'm in it. And I'm standing on the side of the road, kind of looking at my own carnage. Don't know what to do. God knew that accident was coming. I don't believe He ordained it, but in His wisdom, He knew. In His foreknowledge, He knew. So I say that to say, not to simplify it or to to belittle it. I say that to say, Even if you're in a situation and you can't see and you're just looking at your own carnage, God still has you because He's the same God He was before it happened. He's the same God for you that He was before it happened. He is. And you have to allow Him to be that and allow the boundaries. What we do when we get frustrated, we just forget the boundaries. It's like driving behind somebody slow. We get so frustrated, the speed limit might be 60, and we'll go 80. Why? Because I'm frustrated. And if a cop stops me, I'll tell him, I'm frustrated. Sorry, I didn't mean to go that fast. Probably won't help. But that's what we do. We get frustrated, and then we say, forget the boundaries, forget the, forget the plan, forget the pace, I'm doing this myself. I'm doing this myself. And then we find ourselves in deeper trouble. My whole life, my whole life, I've heard my dad say, 
two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right. And, and he's right. Because things are already wrong, and we say, you know what? Can't get any worse. I'll just add more wrong to it. It doesn't make it right. It makes it worse. We've got to pay attention to God's plan. We've got to listen to that voice. We've got to obey God's pace. God, I'm ready for this to be resolved. I'm ready for there to be answers. God's got you. He does. I've been in some horrible momentary situations myself where you just, in the moment, you just say, everything's over. Everything's done. Life is over. This is over. That's over. Everything is, everything is done. Everything is this. Everything is that. This was a horrible decision. I got passed over for this. This happened. That happened. Somebody did me wrong. Somebody did this. That happened. Everything went wrong. And you just, and you have that outlook for a little bit. You just go, there's no way that anything can really be right again. That is the voice of the enemy. And it's the voice of logic. And the voice of logic is not necessarily the voice of the Spirit. Because the voice of the Spirit in the middle of logic telling you it's never going to be right again. The voice of the Spirit will say, it will be right. All good and perfect gifts come from me, and I still have good for you. But we have to go at God's pace. We get upset at the pace, we get upset at the plan, and then we end up going to you know, just our place. You know, we all have, have places we go to. And I don't mean physical places. I mean emotional, spiritual, mental places where we just say, you know what, I'm out. I'm out. I'm checking out. I'm done. I'm checking out. And that's usually when we go back to addictions and people that aren't good for us and places that we know we don't belong anymore, situations that we don't belong in the middle of, when we get frustrated with the plan and we get frustrated with God's pace or lack of it, we go to our comfortable place. I can be accepted here. I'll be fine here. I'm comfortable doing this. I'm good with this. I, I know this will work for me. I don't, have the, I don't have the fight every day that I have when I'm trying to live right, so I'm just going to live here. And for a little while, it feels like you get a reprieve. But as time goes on, you begin to realize, I'm losing ground on everything. I'm losing ground on everything. And when I used to have a close relationship to God and with God, now I don't even feel like I know God. I felt like I was close to God. Now there's a lot of distance. I felt like I could hear the voice of God, and now I can't even pray. I was doing this. I was going to church, you know, on a consistent basis, whatever that is. I was going to church. I, w I, was, I was meditating on God. I was, I was trying to do uh, things that would help me grow spiritually. I went to this. I went to that. I went to the women's ministry. I went to the men's ministry. I went to the class. I read some books. I, I changed my music diet. I did some of this stuff. And, you know, one of the first things we do when we go back to our place of comfort is we take some of the old stuff back out of the bag and we go right back to it. You know, when I, when I was growing up, it was a big thing to burn or throw away all of your, your, your bad music. So people used to come into church, and, and youth pastors were great at this when I was growing up. You know, all, you know, it was, it was again, it was the drug, sex, rock and roll message. And so we would, you'd have to get rid of all your, all your non-Christian music. And I can't tell you how many times I got rid of all my music. It's like, okay, okay, I'm going to quit listening to that kind of music because I believe they're right and this is bad for me and it's, it's making me more anxious to do the wrong things and it's pushing me the wrong way and pulling me the wrong way. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to get rid of all that and I'm only going to listen to this, Christian music and things that, that help my spirit. Well, within about five days, I was getting, I was replenishing my, my music library. Because as soon as the, as soon as that shine wore off, I'd go right back to it and get the same stuff and listen to it the same way. 
in the same situations. And that's what we do. We go, okay, well, God, you know, I'm kind of frustrated with you. You know, my heart is to serve you, but I'm kind of frustrated with you. So I'm just going to take a little break. I've tried to be good. It's not working out. And so now I'm going to try to be bad. I think that will work out a little better. And I've got a lot of experience, so I should, I should be able to get some commendations for this. Or at least some rewards. So that's what I'm going to do. And then at some point, the Spirit calls your name again, and you listen, and you realize, I'm in the wrong place. I followed the wrong voice. You know, one, one of the great mistakes in life is listening to the wrong, the wrong voices. That's one of the great errors of humans, listening to the wrong voices. Because you can find people who will tell you anything you want to hear. You will usually find people in your circle who will tell you anything you want to hear. And when you start listening to the wrong voices, I promise you, 100% of the time, you will end up in the wrong place. You will. I've done it countless times. I've watched people do it even more than that. And I tell people consistently, here's the problem. They're, they'll say, why is this person doing this? It happened, again, this week, another pastor, why is this person doing this? Why are they acting like this? Why have they turned on me? Why do they think this? Why are they doing this? Say, so here's the deal. They're listening to the wrong voices. When you start rebelling against authority in your life, and you start rebelling against God, and you start rebelling against God's plan and against God's pace, you are listening to the wrong voices. And we've all done it. And it will take us there. And when we go to our special place, most people have a certain chair or a place in their house they like to sit. You know, when I, when I broke my ankle and went through all that, I've never been, a, I've never been an easy chair guy, a lazy boy, you know, type thing. He, never, never. I've never been that guy. I've never even wanted to be that guy. I, I, don't, I don't have my chair with my... my bodily imprint in the, in the chair, and I don't, I don't even, I don't have that. I don't want that. I don't, I don't care about that. Well, when I did all that, I ordered me a chair, and they brought it to my house and set it up, and it was the greatest chair I've ever had, and I'm telling you, I would get up in the morning, I would get my crutches or my walker or my knee scooter, and I would get I would get my white self to that chair. I couldn't wait to get, my, to, get to my chair. I can't wait. That's my, that's my chair. That chair is my dog. I can't wait to get to my chair. I'd sit in that chair, and I would literally exhale. <sighs> I'm in my chair. And I could sit there all day long coddling that ankle and that foot that I couldn't put any weight on. I only get up when I have to, but I'm okay. You know why? Because I'm in my chair. It's my chair. If I walked in the room and somebody else was sitting in my chair, I didn't say much, but I was not happy. You're going to have to get out of, your, out of my chair. It's my chair. Who paid for that? Oh, that's right. I did. That's my chair. My chair. Well, after it, all ha after it all got better and we went through it all, we got to a point, and Annette had the audacity, had the audacity to allow the voice of the enemy to speak through her, and she said, you know what, we probably ought to get rid of this chair now. You know how you have to filter through the alphabet and every word is bad? Then you finally get to a letter that, okay, um, uh, yes, why? I was just like, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm going, yeah, okay. But inside I'm going, that's my, that's my chair, man. We're not getting rid of my chair. I can't live without my chair. That's my chair. Well, guess what? We no longer have my chair. Um, 
And I, and I, didn't, even get, I didn't even get reimbursed for it. We had to give it to somebody. We gave it to somebody who needed it. My chair, my season and my chair was done. And I still miss my chair. I do. I would like to be able to go to my chair in the morning and sit there and just be me in my chair. I don't have my chair anymore. Until we strip ourselves of going back to the same place for the same ugly reasons, we're going to keep ending up in the wrong place doing the wrong things. We will. We get to a point. People, we get to a point. And we have to just say, you know what? I love that, but it's not right for me anymore. I enjoy that, but it's not good for me. It doesn't build me up. It tears me down. I love being in this place with these people in this situation, but when I do that, it messes with my spirituality. So as much as I want to, because we laugh a lot, I need to stay out of that chair. And God will tell you those things. He will. can't tell you how many times God has said, okay, you know what? Since you can't control your wonderful sense of humor when you're around those two people, you need to just stay away from them for a while. Because, you know, I kind of have a tendency to have friends who take things too far. I know nobody else has any friends like that, and you've never been like that. But it's like you can say something, and it's, it's acceptable, and they immediately turn it into something very unacceptable. But it's really funny. And so you're like, yeah, that, that's really funny. I like that. I want to be with you guys all the time. Matter of fact, let's just move in together and laugh all the time. We'll have an apartment. We'll get a loft downtown, and we'll all just sit in our loft and laugh. It'll be a laughing loft. Yeah, let's do that. Obviously, I'm making this up as I go, and it's very unimpressive, but <laughs> that's what we do because we're frustrated with God's plan and his pace. So we say, no, I'm going back to my chair. And I can tell you this, I want to buy another chair. You think I haven't looked at the, you think I haven't been all over Amazon? I, a chair delivered to my door. Oh, yeah. I've looked, I, have, I have narrowed it down. I have the top three contenders. When we do that, and this is the third rudiment, and I know it's taken me a long time to get there. This is the third rudiment, and it's peace. It's peace. Because when we, when we rebel against the plan, and when we fight against the pace, we cannot get to a place of peace. Let's go back to Philippians chapter 4, when we did Philippians almost a year ago now. Paul says this, pray about everything, take it to God, put your faith in Him, and He will give you what? Peace. When we went through Philippians, I reminded us, it doesn't say He will give you what you've asked for. He will give you favor. He will give you blessing. He will give you success. He will give you opportunity. All the things we want from God. No. Nope. A lot of times that pace and that plan brings peace, and that's all it brings. Sometimes the answer to your prayer is you get peace. God, you didn't heal that person. He will take you to a place of peace. He may not heal them, but he'll take you to a place of peace. Well, I lost this house, this vehicle, this relationship. And it, it really hurts, and it has hurt, and I don't know what to do about it. And I'm struggling with it, all of it. You may not get those things back. You may not get any semblance of those things back, but I guarantee you, if you seek God, He will take you to a place of peace. He will. And so that's definitely one of the rudiments of our potential. We have the potential to live in peace and walk in peace if we stay on course. 
You know, and sometimes you may have to pull over. If it gets too frustrating, you may have to pull over. Sometimes when it's raining, I've driven in rain so hard, you couldn't even, I couldn't even see the front of my vehicle. I've driven in fog so thick that I couldn't even see the front of my vehicle. You can't see beyond the windshield. And sometimes you have to just go, you know what? I'm going to pull over and let this die down a little bit. We've driven through tornadoes. We've driven through all kinds of storms. And there are times we drove through a sand, a salt storm in Salt Lake City. We went through, we're driving through the salt flats and this salt storm blew up, which we don't know anything about that in Kansas City. But it's like this, the most incredible dust storm you've ever seen in any movie, except it's salt. And you can't see anything. And we had to just pull over. And you say, okay, I'm just going to have to pull over and trust that God will take care of me. Sometimes we have to just pull over and let God take care of us a little bit. Let, us, let Him build us back up. And some of you are in that mode right now. You are on the side of the road. You haven't gotten off track, but you're on the side of the road. You say, God, I need to be replenished. I need to get back on course. He will give you His peace Isaiah 26 says this, God, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust and rely on you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. That's that Jesus filter I was talking about last Sunday. You need to have that filter in place, that Jesus filter in place. Everything goes through that. Everything goes through that. Everything goes through that. I used the, the chiefs as an example last Sunday. People say, what, what other teams do you like? You know, other than the Chiefs, what's, what's, your, favorite, what are your, favorite, what's your favorite team? Uh, nobody. Everything NFL goes through the Chiefs filter. If it can't help the Chiefs, I don't like it. If there's a, a game and a team will help the Chiefs, I like them. Like today, I like the Bengals. I like the Cincinnati Bengals today. There's a chance next week I could really not like them. I didn't like them yesterday, but I like them today. Why? Because they help my, my real purpose. Gives us a home game here. Again, I say that not to glorify football, but to say everything in our life needs to go through that Jesus filter. Well, what do you do in this case? Well, I, I look to the Lord. You know, like Paul said, well, I, I preach him crucified. I preach Jesus crucified. Jesus Christ crucified. Well, what about to these people? Well, okay, to those people, I preach Christ crucified. Everything needs to go through the Jesus filter. Everything needs to go through it. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to think about that. I'm, I'm going I'm to listen to God on it. I'm going to get some, some insight on it. I'm going to pray about it. I tell people consistently, well, you know what? I'm going to pray about that. See what, what God says. You know, the, the, the horrible thing that happened to DeMar, uh, the Buffalo Bills, a couple of weeks ago, uh, that was brutal. It touched so many people. It was, it was a horrible thing, but something awesome happened, happened out of that. For the first time since probably 9-11, we saw almost everybody in our country go, okay, I don't care about that. Let's pray. Let's, let's, look, let's, look, let's look to to the one who can actually do something about it. I, I have one of the t-shirts, one of the Love DeMar t-shirts. I had to get it. Not because of anything football, but because... That reminded us all where there really is an answer. And you had people in the media, and you had people all over social media, and you had people, you know, obviously there are voices that say, don't pray, prayer doesn't do anything. Well, you know what? I believe we saw, I believe we saw a miracle. I believe we saw prayer raise him up. I do. Because there's still that clause, if my people agree together... 
great things happen. And you saw this man who died a couple times on the field, and, and they thought at the very least was going to have brain damage after over nine minutes of cardiac arrest. Out of the hospital in no time, functional in no time, has already been back to the stadium, has already been back to practice, probably not with pads on, but he's been there. I believe we saw God do something. Why? Because people acknowledged him and prayed. And they put down their junk and their thoughts and their adversity and their hate for each other for a little bit and prayed. People on TV were praying on TV. I watched a man, one of the, one of the analysts and commentators, pray on ESPN. A day before that, he would have been fired for that. 100%. But because of what happened, he sat there and prayed, and people said, that's beautiful. We get so off pace, and we get so off the path. But I believe this. As much as our nation is, is really in turmoil within itself, I believe deep in our heart we still know the direction. And that, that, was a, that was a telltale sign. We do. We may cover it up with a lot of junk. But it's amazing at that moment. You saw, you saw people literally joining hands. Race didn't matter. Political affiliation didn't matter. Gender didn't matter. Sexual orientation didn't matter. Everybody just said, hey, let's pray. Let's pray. That's who we need to be. That's who we need to be. We look at so many external things and try to make them spiritual. No, they're, uh, they're side roads. We need to stay on the path. And we've got to trust God's pace. And if we do, somehow he will give us peace. He will. In the worst of situations, he will give us peace. He'll give us peace. He'll give us peace. Out of that, out of that moment of prayer, that day of prayer, some of you probably read that uh, Josh Allen, the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills, said, you know, I know, I know what faith is. I'm familiar with it. I haven't been the best representation of Christianity. But he said, this, this has caused me to, uh, to readjust my faith. And people did that all over the place. God is so real. And, and who He is and how He functions is so real and it's even so tangible. If we will just allow it to be the center of who we are. I'm going to close this a little differently. I just, whatever your position is, whatever your standing is with God, here or listening and watching, just quietly. I'm not asking for anybody to stand or raise your hand or do anything. Just quietly. The word would be reconsecrate. Quietly reconsecrate yourself to God. In this moment, say, God, I want to be committed to you. I want to be committed to your path. I want to be committed to what you've called me to. Whatever your words are, you don't have to use my words. My verbiage is is not anything. But just communicate with God in these next 45 seconds as, as I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we so desperately need you. So many times we want to be on the right path. We want to follow your plan. We want to be walking, moving the right pace. We get anxious. We get frustrated. And we end up 
going a different speed on an entirely different road. And then we find ourselves in a precarious situation. And then we realize, yeah, we need you. But God, I pray that you would lead and guide. Speak to people, everybody in the sound of my voice today and as they listen to this in the future. Speak to people, God. Speak truth to us. By your Holy Spirit, draw us back to you. Draw us back to the place we need to be. We so desperately need you. We need you as people. We need you as a nation. We need you globally. God, we so desperately need you. Our perspective gets so skewed by things that probably don't even matter. And by opinions, disagreements. God, I pray that you would help us to remain in a place of truth. Remain in a place of understanding. Remain in a place of having a heart for you and being able to live that out. And as we're all praying, God, we commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to you. I commit myself to you again for the 8,342nd time. I commit myself to you again to be who you want me to be. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to stand, walk out the door. It's late. You will probably meet people in the parking lot. You're in a good frame of spirit right now. They may not be. So uh, thank you for, uh, for hanging with me. Uh, God spoke some different things through me than I expected in this service, but uh, uh, be blessed in who God's called you to be and allow God to use you, uh, have a direction, and uh, represent Jesus. Be blessed and be safe this week.